Good morning, explorers. This is GeoPro Adventures, and welcome to the first in a series of on-location environmental programming. I mean, beautiful Glacier National Park out here along a stream in bear country. It's a beautiful place to be. Let's start out by discussing what a glacier is. After the snow from the season melts, you're left with a compact ice of at least 100 feet thick that covers 25 acres. That is the true definition of a glacier. As the temperature warms and the climate changes, the glaciers will continue to melt in this area and Glacier National Park will be glacier free by the year 2030. To say glacier melts is actually an incorrect statement. What the glacier does is it actually slides down the mountain, grinding the, the mountain underneath it, creating glacier dust. This glacier dust then flows into the rivers and streams. Research has shown that the glacier dust has no effect on the aquatic wildlife in the area. I'm here at Glacier National Park, the site of the 2015 Reynolds Fire. I want to show you the amazing diversity and regeneration of the forest after that fire just two years ago. You can see right amongst the, the roots of the charred embers, we have new growth of wildflowers, fresh meadows, the view here is really spectacular. The old forest will take four to five hundred years to regenerate, but during the meantime, you have these beautiful meadows and wildflowers which bring in fresh animals, fresh vegetation, fresh food supply. Glacier National Park is an old growth forest. It has areas of the park that have not burnt in over a thousand years. To be a healthy forest, you actually need the forest fires. They're not only welcomed, but they're essential to the biodiversity of the forest. 99% of all forest fires are caused by lightning strikes. In one day alone in August this year, Glacier had over 150 lightning strikes inside the park. Several forest fires developed just from that one storm. As the fire burns through the forest, the larger animals will escape easily by running. The smaller animals will burrow into their own little dens and they'll also be safe from the fire. As we look around this site of this forest fire that was just two years ago, we see the amazing biodiversity that's already taking place for the evolution of this forest. If you look past the burnt timbers, you see an entirely new ecosystem that's more friendly to animals that would not want to be in or survive in a dense covered forest. Glacier Park has over a million acres. Right now, only about 21,000 acres, less than 2% of the entire forest is on fire. They have fires in Glacier and all national parks every single year. It's essential to the survival of the forest. It's only when they threaten a historic monument or some place that threatens people's lives will they intervene to stop the fire. We haven't found any evidence of the forest fire harmfully affecting the aquatic life in the ecosystem of the streams and rivers. Everybody we've talked to, all our research we've done, has just shown that forest fires are a natural part of the evolution of a forest and essential to its continuation. We're back at camp and I just wanted to answer a few questions that we didn't get answered in the field. So, thank you to the HDU Project and Toledo Public Schools for sending in your questions for this week. 
for any other schools that are watching and tuning in today, thank you for joining us and feel free to email myself at geoproadventures at gmail.com. One of the first questions we have is about the invasive mussel species. It's been a problem for a lot of states, not just uh, Glacier National Park and Montana. What's great about the control that they have at Glacier is they have water inspections on every single type of watercraft, including kayaks and paddle boards. Anything that you're going to put in the water has to be inspected. The second part is, is there is zero invasive mussels in Glacier National Park. This is done by the strict controls that they have and right now they have no motorized water vessels that are allowed in the park in any of the water streams. A student asks how many visitors Glacier National Park gets. They get over three million visitors between May and September. We went there last week. The fall colors were changing the tourists were gone. It was an amazing time to go. So if you have a chance to go, I would say the end of September is by far the best time to go. We were in Yellowstone during the tourist season. We had bumper to bumper traffic two hours straight from Jackson Hole all the way to Old Faithful. It really is a different experience when you can go off season and experience the park for its true beauty. Here's a good question about job opportunities for high schoolers. We talked to a lot of naturalists and park rangers and we found out that like many of these national parks, the job competition is pretty intense. They have people with master's degrees from colleges coming in to do seasonal work and research. So as a high schooler, there's really two opportunities. You can apply through their website and get an entry-level job, which they said is most likely going to be taking tickets and taking people's money at the windows. Or if you want to have a more exciting opportunity, you should work with your school and develop an internship. This is going to give you the opportunity to work right alongside a naturalist and have the best opportunity. So I'm going to challenge your classroom today to write a proposal to either a local, state, or national park and set up some type of internship that gives your classroom, students like yourself that are really interested in this field, an opportunity to work alongside naturalists and get yourself the exposure that you want. So thank you very much again for joining GeoPro Adventures. We'll be back with you in a couple weeks with something out of Washington State and I encourage you to write in to geoproadventures at gmail.com with some ideas that you'd like to see for our next presentation. I appreciate you tuning in and see you next week.